think it's comical, quite frankly. Um, before I even move ahead here, I'll invite Ori and uh, your friend Raymond right now. I have uh, two envelopes here. I will give you a million dollars of my personal money right now if either one of you can tell me specific details of what's... Now, don't tell me about the energy or that it's not okay, the right man, time. I'll but tell just you tell what me what, what's tell in you, here right I'll now. You an, tell me right now what's in, what's in the envelope. I find you an ideological tell me, tell bigot. Me, that's what I find. What's in the envelope you right claim, now. Tell me what's you in the claim envelope. That you tell me what's in the envelope. Do don't give me all this bullshit. Tell me what's in the envelope. You do not believe Tell me what's in the envelope. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Tell me what's in the envelope. Right here. Guys, 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 guys. guys. Listen to me. You can't. Hey everybody and welcome to Duality 9X. I've got a great, great video for you guys today. Today I'm going to feature a very famous and popular illusionist by the name of Chris Angel. Now Chris Angel is actually going to share his opinions and feelings about those who claim to predict the future. I'm talking about psychics, mediums, fortune tellers. But before that, you just saw a little snippet, a little snippet uh, with, uh, with Chris Angel challenging a paranormalist by the name of Jim Callahan to actually predict what is actually in his envelope. Now, you saw that little melee that almost happened between Chris Angel and Jim Callahan and they had to be pulled apart. So I'm gonna actually show you that video uh, in its entirety and then right after that we're gonna hear uh, Jim Callahan talk to some uh, some other people about his opinions on on those who claim to predict the future so uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us I want to thank you guys for supporting us please smash the like and subscribe and uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys and your comments on what you guys think about this video so without further ado let's go This is Phenomenon. We're live. It's Halloween. Earlier tonight, Raven Simone was asked by our next competitor to choose an object from a selection of 100 items. Paranormalist Jim Callahan claims he will decipher what this object is with the aid of the spirit world. Meet the haunting Jim Callahan. <laughs> I started performing as a paranormalist probably when I was 18 years old. A lot of my work has to do with people's perceptions of reality and what happens to you after you die. Raymond Hill is a gentleman that passed over to the other side in 1980. I contacted him about a year and a half ago and he's been working with me in various experiments. He initially used pendulums to communicate with me. Raymond will come back in 2045. I get the feeling that Raymond knows about his past lives because there's always been somebody like me linking up from the other side. There may be a way to punch a hole just briefly through to this other reality. Jim is about to present a paranormal demonstration that some of you may find distressing. It is live and sometimes things happen and sometimes they don't. Either way, he would like the audience to please remain completely silent. Here is Jim Callahan. You're about to witness a form of spirit possession. Automatic writing is when a paranormalist allows somebody who has died to take possession of his or her body. The spirit communicates with the living in written form. In my case, it is the late author known as Raymond Hill who will communicate through me this evening. The linking process with Raymond is already underway. That's why I cannot communicate directly with you at this time. You've seen movies or pictures of seances with people sitting in a circle holding hands. This is done to contain the paranormal energy, to keep it in one place, to focus it. The ring of salt around me serves the same purpose 
as the circle of joined hands. In a moment, bells will chime. It is the signal to Raymond and I to initiate the final step of the linking process. decided that Raymond would prove his presence by communicating some piece of information that I could not possibly know. Out of 100 items, one has been randomly selected in private and sealed into a box filled with salt. I have had no contact with the box during or after the selection of the object. It has not been tampered with in any way. If all goes well, Raymond will identify the object. Like when the tone sounds, items the box objects. will be open, breaking the connection between Raymond, the box, and myself. Seems to be quite stress. Raven. What did you put in the box? A little toy car, an orange one. I'm sorry. It's easier to read Raven's writing in the mirror. It says metal, rectangle, four wheels. Is it metal? Yeah, it's metal, and it's rectangular and has four wheels. Ladies. <laughs> I appreciate I thank you for the entertainment. I hope you enjoyed the entertainment I provided this evening. And I hope it gives you something to remember for the rest of your lives. I thank you. Put my hand on your shoulder. Jim, you're probably the most controversial years. person here in the competition. What do you feel about the people that are non-believers who say that this isn't real? I am also a skeptic. This is America. I think people should make up their own minds on what they believe and what they think. So that's it. Well, let's see what Raven thinks. Raven, you seemed shocked again. Uh, yes, I've been around that box the whole entire time. I picked it out. I have not seen one person pass by it or whatever and whatnot. The door was locked right by. I don't understand. And no previous rehearsal or no, conversation? No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you very much. Okay, Uri, obviously a very physically demanding performance. What do you think? Uh, Jim, your display of supernatural powers is very controversial but very convincing. I want to believe that there is a Raymond on the other side. Besides, there is a, a flare of honesty about you that brings credibility to what you say. Very interesting act. Chris, I, I've just got to know you over the last couple of weeks, but I can see you're itching to say something here. I just think it's comical, quite frankly. Um, <sighs> before I even move ahead here, I'll invite Ori and uh, your friend Raymond right now, I have uh, two envelopes here. I will give you a million dollars of my personal money right now if either one of you can tell me specific details of what's... Now, don't tell me about the energy or that it's not okay, the right time. Man, but just tell me what, what's in here right now. You an, tell me right now what's, it, what's in the envelope. I find you an ideological tell me, tell me, tell me That's what I find. What's in the envelope you right claim... Now. Tell me what's in the envelope. That tell you me what's in the envelope. Don't give Tell me what's in the 
That's a live performance. I mean, to have that happen, I mean, that, that's a network's biggest fear to have something like that happen in, in a live setting. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. All right. Can, can you help me understand, like, when you walked in here, you said you're a little bit of a mentalist. Was that real? Like, is that... I was kind of <laughs> with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, yeah. can you explain to me how they can look at somebody's what face? What did I say to you when... I... When you walked in, I think, I forgot. Yeah, you said you... you were like, oh, you got married at the White Chapel. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But, but, yeah. but then, I'm because I'm like, dude, when somebody, like, looks at somebody and they're just, like, write down the name of their dog and show yeah. it to them, like, what the f*** is that? It's all bullshit. Okay. <laughs> There is That's no. All you gotta say. Thank take, God. take me undercover with you. This will be a show. <laughs> okay. Let's go undercover to like you know tarot card readers. People that can read your palm, and we'll okay. go sit there, and I'll have a little camera, and I'll like completely expose. It's all cold reading. It's all bullshit. Like somebody says, "Hey, it's listen. It's magic. It's tricks. It's illusions. It's all of that stuff." You know, Houdini spent what half of his life debunking yeah, these people yeah because his mom yeah like 1926 uh, he died but his mom lost, died he, and he's... he lost his mom he's just super upset about that mm -hmm. and uh was he, he he so wanted to communicate with her and like all the seance people yeah the Is mediums that... would be like oh your mom's talking to me and and then the he realized the that they were using the same tactics that he would employ doing tricks. So he exposed them and then he got sued and he would go to court. And so his, half of his life, that's what he did. He battled these people. So when he died in 1926 on Halloween, he said to his wife, Bess, I'm gonna give you a word because people are gonna claim that they connected to me and contacted me. Ask them what, what I'm telling telling you telling them to give to tell you and so basically they held a seance for 10 years it was a vigil it was um in california on top of the i think the roosevelt hotel and um right where my star is by the way yeah. which was cool that they tied it together with houdini but uh they had a 10-year vigil there a seance and eventually his uh, wife blew out the light and said that no one was capable of making that connection and the word that they had before he died that he told his wife would be is the word believe. And in the word believe, in the center of that word is lie. Hmm. So none of them um, That's said, funny. hey, we're contacting thee. What's What is he saying? Believe. No one did that. Yeah, what wow. about that guy that would, the, the great Randy? James Randy. And yeah, I knew him. It? I know James Randy when I was 17 years old. I had a <coughs> cable access show <laughs> called Hot Kicks uh, back in the day in Brookhaven, New York. I uh, had him on, and he was the one who came up with me confirming to be called uh, Chris Angel. No shit. Yeah, my, my real name is uh, Christopher Nicholas Sarandakos. Then I had Santos, then I had Sarantis, and then I was thinking about Angel. He's like, Angel, that's a great name for you. You look nothing like an angel, and you have birds in your show. And, and I, I kept it. And uh, I've known him uh, for many, many years. He was always very kind to me. He passed. Um, but, uh, but he started a foundation that debunked or proved that, it, that, he, that what people claim to be psychic or supernatural, that he couldn't reproduce or explain how it worked. And he did that when he died. The guy that started running his foundation is a guy, is a dear friend of mine, Banachek, um, who um, runs that foundation. And uh, they have a million dollars for anybody that can do anything that can't be explained or reproduced. And then I jumped in, I put a million dollars on the line a couple of times to, uh, to offer to like some of the Long Island psychic yeah. and all these people just to, and they just run, they just run. Yeah, I mean, you remember watching that documentary with me when he would just like go on the Today, Tonight Show or whatever it was and these people would come out and he's like, okay, well, why don't you do this? And you'll like put a box around it and they, they can't do it. Like, I just, it's just, I'm not feeling yeah. it today. Or we're going to move this pen with our mind. And he said, okay. And he would take like little styrofoam and put it on there and said, okay, 
move the pen and not with the styrofoam because one of the techniques is is that you blow uh-huh. on the table which makes the pen go in reverse yeah. um or there's some other techniques so like you know it, it, you know he was on johnny carson and he had a guy named ori gela on mm-hmm. who i did a show with and ori gela claimed that, that he could bend forks and silverware and all of these it's different cold. things and then when i was in front of him I said on television, I said, okay, I'll give you a million dollars, bend this fork right now, because I, I bend forks all the time. No, show me, show, bend, and he wouldn't do it. And he claimed that it was a trick. If I do it now, it's a trick. You know, but what I did back <laughs> then was, and I was just like, so it kind of exposed that it was bullshit. Um, I do want to push back, though, because I feel like there have been some really pretty credible psychic things I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> My dad went to see a psychic um, with, with, at the time, my stepmom. The psychic said, your, your first wife um, needs to be set free because her ashes have not been spread, right? Like, so the psychic knew that my dad a had a first wife. B his first wife was dead, and the 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 ashes were sitting in an urn on uh, a shelf in my sister's bedroom closet because we just hadn't come up with a, an idea for for spreading these ashes. Okay, so um, you ever buy uh, a car, and as soon as you take it out on the road, you realize, oh, there's my car over there. There's my car over there. Uh-huh. You ever see, and, but when you don't have that car, you never notice that. So uh-huh. here's what happens. It's basically called cold reading. So you weren't there actually listening to I the wasn't. chain of events. And if I guarantee you, if you videotape that and you listen to the playback, um, you would see and I could point out exactly the method of how they do it. They, they talk about a lot of things. People have expressions, body language, they're engaged, they might even say something. So if I'm talking general, generalizing about different things and I see that you have an interest in something, I'm going to feed off of your body language, how you react, your facial expressions, if you respond to me, and I'm going to constantly go and go further and further once I hit something. I'm going to start going more in that direction and I'm going to start digging and trying to see, okay, which path am I going? I'm changing paths constantly. Then at the end of that process, you're going to leave there and the only thing you're going to remember is what you want to remember that's important to you. That's why Houdini had such a problem with people taking advantage of people that lost a loved one because people would go to psychic and say, I love this person, I miss them. And people would take, the psychics would take these people, these vulnerable people, their money, and essentially just give them false hope and just read them and respond to them based on the information that they were gathering while they were talking to that person. It's called cold reading. And it's just, you know, I've hypnotized you know what, 150 people to remove their clothes. Um, I've, I've done a lot of these things. I've exposed this stuff. It is, you know, the sad part about it is, is that we take this and it doesn't become just entertainment or a trick anymore. We're taking this and we're putting such a value on it. And we're putting a value on it because it goes to our heart with somebody that we love and this most intimate connection that we have as humans. And now I'm exposing that it's bullshit. And now you feel like, oh my God, this thing that I thought, it's kind of like when you find out Santa Claus Mm -hmm. as a kid, there's no Santa Claus. I can assure you, if people had the ability to do that, why? On 9 10, hmm. they did not predict 9 11. Mm-hmm. Why are they sitting there trying to take $10, $20, $40 for a reading when they can right. literally just predict what a lottery would be? I mean, there's so many reasons and so many facts. But for me, 
being somebody who's been doing magic since I was six years old and I'm not a specialist in anything. I'm a general practitioner, but I know a bit about all the different disciplines within the art. Um, from my perspective, I would love to see anyone do something. For me, a couple people that I have a lot of respect for, that we can't explain it or reproduce it. Have you ever been, and we put wow. our we put our money on the line for that. Well, that's 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 really interesting. I mean, here's a guy who is known to the world as a master illusionist, right? Um, and claims to know a little bit of the different kinds of disciplines when it comes to those that particular form of art. Having said that, he doesn't claim to be able to predict the future or to know what you're thinking. Um, you know, things that he claims to be just BS. And he's putting his money on the line, as are a number of other people in his social circle to debunk that particular discipline now i don't know what your thoughts are on it i find it to be quite intriguing um are there such a thing as real fortune tellers people who use tarot cards to be able to predict the future or to be able to know about your past not having ever met you or know anything about you uh, he talks about cold readings and how these people use like different kinds of strategies to be able to ask questions and to pick at things until they hit something and then when they hit something then they kind of delve further into it right so um, very very interesting I mean he does make a good point he makes a couple good points why is it that you know these people can't predict or on 9 10 september 10th they weren't able to predict what was going to happen the next day or why are some of these so-called fortune tellers or you know um medium psychics you know why are they working so hard to make just like to earn like ten dollars twenty dollars forty dollars a reading when they can just go and predict the lotto numbers and win the lotto and call it a day anyhow uh i'd love to hear your guys comments what you guys think what you guys feel but i'll definitely be you know having some more videos on on this topic and uh similar similar topics of interest of course in the near future but in the meantime that's all we have for you guys today so listen i want to thank you guys for joining smash the like subscribe comment and please share this with as many people as you can and yeah, tell me, tell me how you feel about this video. Tell me if there's anything that you want to hear or see in particular, and I'll do my best to accommodate. In the meantime, and in between time, and until our next adventure, don't do anything crazy to yourself. We'll catch you on the next one.